Hi, welcome to all. In the last class, we discussed about the oral cavity, tongue, and teeth. In today's class, we'll discuss about the pharynx. So, pharynx is a connecting organ to the mouth and the esophagus. So, here where it is located. So, it is a wide muscular tube located behind the nose, mouth, and the larynx. So, it is a wide muscular tube. It is located behind the nose, mouth, and larynx. So, this is the larynx behind the larynx. So, this total portion is called as pharynx. So, it extends from the base of the uh, skull to the cricoid cartilage. To the cricoid. So, this is the thyroid. Uh, this is the uh, larynx. So, here the cricoid cartilage is present. So, from the uh, base of the skull to the cricoid cartilage, it is extended. The pharynx is subdivided into nasopharynx, which is connecting to the nasal part, and the other one is oropharynx, which is connecting to the oral cavity. So, this is the oropharynx, and this is the laryngopharynx, which is connecting to the larynx. Now, we will discuss about the nasopharynx. So, nasopharynx is anteriorly communicates with the nasal cavity through a posterior nase. So, this is the posterior nase. Through this posterior nase, this nasal cavity is connecting to nasopharynx. This portion is also called as coyana. And inferiorly, so this nasopharynx inferiorly communicates with the oropharynx. So inferiorly, it communicates with oropharynx. Next one is the lateral wall of the nasopharynx is showing one opening. So if you see here, it, it, is, it shows one opening. That opening is called as eustachian opening. Okay, this is the eustachian opening where the uh, eustachian tube is connecting to the ear and uh, to the nasopharynx. So it connects the ear to the uh, nasopharynx, which will help in the balancing of the pressure present in the atmosphere. Okay, that is the function of eustachian tube. And near the junction of the roof and the posterior wall of the pharyngeal tons, uh, in the junction of the roof. And posterior wall, there is a pharyngeal tonsil is present. So this is a pharyngeal tonsil. So at the junction of the uh, roof and the posterior wall, there is a tonsil is present. That is pharyngeal tonsil is present. Behind the opening of the artery tube, uh, 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 another lymphoid tissue collection is present. That is called as tubal tonsil is present. Okay, behind the opening of the artery tube, another lymphoid tissue collection is present. That is called tubal tonsil. So here tubal tonsil will be present so we already discussed about valdez stain so those are the tonsils which are present around the pharynx okay and next one is oropharynx the part of the pharynx that lies behind the soft palate and the hyoid bone is called as oropharynx so this is the soft palate and hyoid bone is present this is the hyoid bone behind this soft palate and hyoid bone the portion is called as oropharynx in its lateral wall between the palatoglons uh, Palatoglossal arch and the palatopharyngeal arch is a palatine tonsil will be present. So see here in this lateral wall, one tonsil is present that is called palatine tonsil, which is present between the palatoglossal arch and the one more arch. This is the palatopharyngeal arch. So this is a palatopharyngeal arch. This is palatoglossal arch. Between these two, palatine tonsil is present. So if you see here, so this is the palatoglossal arch. And this is the palatopharyngeal arch. Between these two arch, one uh, tonsil is present. That is called palatine tonsil. Okay. Anterior wall of the uh, anterior wall consists of base of the tongue. So anterior wall of the oropharynx is having the base of the tongue, and superior wall is consisting of inferior surface of the uvula. Okay. In the superior wall, we are having the uvula. So inferior surface of the uvula is having the superior wall at the base a flap of connective tissue called as epiglottis which is closing the glottis is present so this is the epiglottis is present which is closing the glottis is present at the base and next one is laryngopharynx so laryngopharynx is also called as hypopharynx hypopharynx means this is the lowest pharynx and it is a part of uh, throat th 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 connecting the oropharynx and esopharynx it is a part of throat which is connecting the oropharynx and the esophagus that is laryngopharynx it lies inferior to the epiglottis and ends at the location where it divides into respiratory and digestive pathway so uh, this laryngopharynx is present 
uh, inferior to the epiglottis and it connecting the respiratory tract that is anterior respiratory tract and posteriorly the digestive tract is present. It is connecting anteriorly the respiratory tract and posteriorly the digestive pathway. The superior border of the laryngopharynx is at the hyoid bone. The superior border is present near the hyoid bone. So that is about laryngopharynx. Now we will discuss about the Waldeyer's tonsillar ring. So it is a ring arrangement of the lymphoid tissue in the pharynx. The ring consists of the uh, different tonsils. Those are first one is pharyngeal tonsil and sorry one pharyngeal tonsil two tubal tonsils, one palatine tonsil and one lingual tonsil. All these tonsils will form a ring-like structure around the uh, opening of the mouth. So this one is one pharyngeal tonsil, it is also called as adenoid and two tubal tonsils and two palatine tonsils which is present between the pharyngeal arch and uh, uh, pharyngeal laryngeal arch. So, so those two are between these two arches, palatine tonsil is present and next one is lingual uh, tonsil which is present below the tongue these all these arches will form a round structure so that's why it's called valdeus tonsillar link now we will discuss about the esophagus it is esophagus commonly known as food pipe or gullet it is a fibromuscular tube so this is the uh, mouth and uh, nasopharynx and this larynx and after that it is the esophagus this esophagus is also called as food pipe or gullet it is a fibromuscular tube and it is about 25 centimeters in length. So see here, so this uh, uh, muscular like structure is present. Huh? So this is esophagus and it is a fibromuscular tube which is connecting the pharynx with the stomach and it extends from the base of the pharynx to the opening of the stomach. So from the base of the pharynx to the stomach it extends. So see here, here this is the base of the pharynx and it extends up to the stomach. So that is the extension of the uh, esophagus. It is about 25 centimeters in length. It descends behind the trachea and heart, passes through the diaphragm and empties out into the uppermost region of the stomach. So it, it comes downwards behind the trachea. So this is the trachea. Behind the trachea, it comes downwards. And also arch of aorta. Behind this arch of aorta, it comes downwards and piercing the diaphragm. So it is the diaphragm. It piercing the diaphragm and enters into the superior portion of the stomach. And it has two muscular rings or otherwise known as sphincters in the wall. One is at the top and one is at the bottom. It has two muscular oh, openings. One is at the top and one is at the bottom. Okay. Those are called as sphincters. So that is about esophagus. Now we will discuss about the stomach. So this is the stomach. Stomach is a muscular halo organ. And it is located between the esophagus and the small intestine. The stomach is present between esophagus and the small intestine. Okay. It is in the left part of the abdominal cavity. It is present at the left portion of the abdominal cavity. And it has two borders called as greater curvature. So, the stomach is having two borders. One is le lesser curvature and this is greater curvature. So, this is the greater curvature and this is the lesser curvature. A large double fold of the visceral peritoneum called greater omentum hangs down from the greater curvature of the stomach. So from this greater curvature of the stomach, a peritoneal layer, so this is a peritoneal layer is present. That peritoneal layer is called as greater omentum. Okay. That is hangs like an apron uh, in the anterior to the uh, below organs that is large intestine and small intestine. That is the uh, visceral peritoneum that the name is called that is also called as greater momentum okay now the stomach has two surfaces one is this uh, the visible surface is anterior surface and backside surface is posterior surface it divides into the stomach can be divided into the topmost portion is called as cardiac part and uh, no, sorry uh, the opening of the esophagus portion is called cardiac part and the topmost portion is called as fundus and another was the portion is this large portion is called as body of the stomach and the pyloric part. So the last portion is called pyloric part. And this pyloric part is having the small portion is pyloric antrum and another one is pyloric canal. This pyloric canal will open into the uh, duodenum whereas pyloric antrum will connect both the body of the stomach and pyloric uh, canal. Okay. 
the stomach is guarded by the stomach is guarded by so it is also having two guards or otherwise two sphincters one is at the top and one is at the last of the stomach those uh, guards are one is cardiac sphincter and another one is pyloric sphincter so cardiac sphincter is present at the cardiac region so or otherwise it is, uh, it is present at the lowest portion of the esophageal uh, so that's why it is called lower esophageal sphincter and another one is pyloric sphincter now we already discussed in the esophagus we are having the two sphincters one is present at the top one is at the present at the bottom this bottom the sphincter is nothing but cardiac sphincter okay where the cardiac sphincter is present at the junction of the esophagus and the stomach and next one is pyloric sphincter pyloric sphincter is uh, present at the junction between duodenum and the stomach duodenum is the next portion of the stomach okay now what is the relations of the stomach relations means what are the organs that present anteriorly and posteriorly of the stomach anteriorly the anterior abdominal wall is present left postural margin left pleura lungs diaphragm and left lobe of the liver will be present whereas in posteriorly so you can see here in this diagram lesser sac will be present diaphragm will be present this is the uh, spleen will be present at this location and the left suprarenal glands so this is the left kidney so here the suprarenal gland will be present post uh, in the posteriorly so left kidney left suprarenal gland and the splenic artery so this is here the spleen will be present here uh, the splenic arteries will be present and the pancreas will be present and the transverse mesocolon and transverse colon is also present so transverse mesocolon and transverse colon is also present in the posterior portion that is the relations of the stomach and next one is the stomach gets the blood from the lesser curvature uh, getting the blood from the left and the right gastric arteries whereas greater curvature is getting the blood from the gastrophrenic arteries that is left gastrophrenic uh, and the right gastrophrenic arteries and fundus portion is getting from the short gastric arteries fundus portion is getting the blood from short gastric arteries and the nerve supply of the stomach is by celiac ganglia vagus nerve so that is about the stomach now we will in detail know the uh, inner, inner structure of the stomach so that is histology so the stomach wall is made up of different layers so the, those layers are mucous layer mucosal layer which is present the innermost layer so this is a mucous layer and uh, which is having the glands and submucus below that layer we are having the submucus so if you see here so this is a mucus layer uh, so actually this is a cross section of a stomach wall so this is a mucus layer below that mucus layer we are having the submucosal layer in the mucus layer we are having the different glands so this is submucosal layer which is having the blood vessels okay different blood vessels will be present and next one is muscular layer so this total thing is muscular layer there are different layer of muscles are present one is oblique layer uh, uh, and the circular layer so otherwise uh, otherwise it is also called a circular and longitudinal layers will be present so circular and longitudinal layers of the muscles and last layer so this is the last layer that is called sealer layer which is present the outermost layer these are the layers of the stomach and serosal layer is a protective layer so that is about the histology of the stomach now we will discuss about the next portion of the digestive tract that is duodenum so see here this is the duodenum so it extends from the stomach to the small intestine and it is also called as anterior intestinal and proximal, proximal intestine okay so it is also called as proximal intestine the duodenum is about 25 to 38 cm length and it is a hollow joint tube and it can be this duodenum can be divided into four parts one is first part or otherwise superior part so from here to here this is the first part and from here to here this is the second part or otherwise descending part and from here to here it is third part or otherwise horizontal part and this is the last portion that is fourth part is also called as anterior part so the duodenum can be divided into four parts now the duodenum have this duodenum will have two openings one is common opening for bile and pancreatic duct at the major duodenal papillae one is major duodenal papillae and another one is minor duodenal papillae major duodenal papillae 
will open the bile and pancreatic duct commonly okay and opening of the accessory pancreatic duct is present at the minor duodenal papillae this is the minor duodenal papillae okay that is about duodenum now relations of the duodenum so anteriorly the duodenum is related to the liver transverse colon transverse mesocolon and the loops of the small intestine and posteriorly if you see this duodenum posteriorly it relates to the so here kidney will be present so it relates to the right renal hilum and ureter and the right renal vessels will be present and medially so in the medial portion it is having the head of the pancreas and common bile duct and pancreatic duct is present and laterally we are having the right celiac flexure will be present in the laterally we are having the right celiac so this is the right celiac flexure and so this is present in the laterally so these are the relations of the duodenum and the, the duodenum will get the blood from the superior and inferior pancreato duodenal artery and now supplied by celiac ganglia and vagus nerve as like a, the stomach so that's it about duodenum and the next topic is we will discuss about the small intestine so small intestine it includes the so small intestine includes duodenum jejunum and ileum those three portions are uh, uh, small intestine so this is the duodenum so that's why only uh, proximal portion of the uh, intestine so dear, um, small intestine proximal portion we will call it as duodenum or otherwise duodenum other name is proximal portion of the uh small intestine so this is the duodenum and next one is jejunum and final portion is ileum okay the length of the small intestine is about five and half to six meters long and jejunum so this is a jejunum jejunum begins at the duodenal flexure so jejunum begins at the duodenal flexure and continues as the ileum and finally the ileum opens into the uh, so this, from the duodenal flexure it starts so this continues as jejunum um, and finally it continues as ileum and finally it opens into a uh, small intestine sorry large intestine by uh, by ileocecal junction which is present at the right iliac fossa this is uh, present at the right iliac fossa and next one is the coils of jejunum and ileum is suspended by a mesentery from the posterior abdominal wall so the all these small intestine have to be supported by some structure that some structure is nothing but mesentery so if you see here this is a medial section of the body so in the medial section this total things are nothing but uh, small intestine this is a large intestine and this is a large intestine this total small intestine or otherwise this small small intestine can be divided into jejunum and ileum right so this jejunum and ileum is uh, suspended by one side uh, fatty tissue that is called as mesentery so mesentery has two boundaries one is root and another one is intestinal border so if you see here uh, the, this is the intestinal border of the mesentery and another one is root root is attached to the posterior abdominal wall and the root is about uh, the uh, root is about 15 centimeters long it directs obliquely runs downwards and to the right side so if you see here uh, so from here to here the root is starting and it will directed so it starts from the left side of the t12 vertebra to the right sacroiliac joint that is about the root next one is the root of the mesentery so if you see here so this is the image of root of the mesentery this yellow color portion it crosses some portion some parts of the body those parts are horizontal part of the duodenum so it crosses crosses the horizontal part of the duodenum and iota uh, sorry iota and inferior vena cava so it also crosses the inferior vena cava and also iota and also it crosses the right ureter so right ureter is present at this location it also crosses the right ureter and also it crosses the gonadal wells these are the gonadal wells so it crosses these structures in the they cross it cross the root of the mesentery crosses the horizontal part of the duodenum iota and inferior vena cava so as major muscle right ureter and right gonadal vessels and what is the difference between jejunum and ileum so we already know that uh, small intestine is having three portions one is duodenum jejunum and ileum 
we already uh, discussed about the duodenum. Now we will discuss the uh, difference between jejunum and ileum. So the color of the jejunum is about deeper red in color, whereas ileum is paler pink in color. Why? Because the jejunum will have more blood supply. That's why it is deeper red in color. And wall is thick and heavy. The jejunum wall is thick and heavy, whereas ileum wall is thin and light. And vascularity. So jejunum is having the more vascularity. Ileum is having less vascularity. Why? Because the most portion of the digestive uh, system uh, digestion is takes place in the jejunum only. So that's why more blood is required. So that's why more vessels are present in the jejunum only, but less vessels are present in ileum. And next one is arcades. A few large loops are present in jejunum, whereas many short loops are present in the Ileum. So we'll discuss about the arcades in the next slides. And next one is vasa recta or otherwise arteria recta. So arteria recta is present long in the jejunum, whereas in the ileum where they are very short. And fat in the mesentery. In the mesentery, jejunum is having less fat, whereas ileum is having more fat. So that is also same reason jejunum is having more blood supply, whereas ileum is having less blood supply. Because of that, fat is less in the jejunum and fat is more in the ileum. And circular pores, otherwise plica circularis. So those are present large, tall, and closely plaqued in the jejunum, whereas ileum low and sparsely present and may mostly absent in the distal portion of the ileum. And lymphoid nodules, less lymphoid nodules are present in the jejunum, whereas more lymphoid nodules are present in the ileum. So blood supply. So the small intestine will have the blood supply from superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery and now supply by sympathetic fibers, superior mesenteric plexus and parasympathetic fibers by vagus nerve. And now we will discuss about the large intestine. So the extension of the large intestine is from at the junction of ileocecal junction to the rectum. Okay. So it extends from the ileocecal junction and to the anal region, the large intestine is extended. It is about 1.5 meters long. It's about this total length is about 1.5 meters long. The parts of the large intestine are first portion is cecum, and the next one is ascending colon. This is ascending colon, and next one is transverse colon, and next one is descending colon, and this is the sigmoid colon, and this is the rectum, and finally it opens into the anal canal that is the uh, parts of the large intestine now at the junction of the ileum and the cecum so at the junction of the ileum and the cecum there is a narrow diverticulum is present that is called vermiform appendix narrow diverticulum is present that is called vermiform appendix will be present <coughs> and the cecum cecum is the first section of the colon and involved in the digestion so the cecum is the first portion cecum is the first portion of the colon and it is involved in the digestion. So you have to remember that colon is nothing but large intestine. <coughs> okay. And this cecum is a broad blind pouch and it is about 5 to 7 centimeters in length and it is uh, situated in the ileocecal fossa. And it continues as ascending colon. It continues upwards as ascending colon. Now we will discuss about the appendix. So appendix is a so this is the appendix. Appendix is a blind ender tube connected to the cecum. The term vermiform uh, comes from the Latin word called as warm shape. Because of this warm shape, uh, it is named as vermiform appendix. It is a vestigial organ in the human body having the base and body. So it is having the base and the body. Okay. The human appendix is average about 9 centimeters. This is the length is about 9 centimeters. And the position of the appendix is present different in different human beings. Okay, it is variable position. So usually it is a retrocecal position. So usually the retrocecal position. So the varial positions are shown here. So first one is pre ileal uh, portion uh, direction and post ileal direction. Are promontory direction, pelvic direction, subsecal direction, and parasecal direction. So the base portion, the base of the appendix, the base of the appendix is present at the McBurney's point. The base of the appendix is present at the McBurney's 
point. Now, what is meant by McBurney's point? So, the appendix, the uh, McBurney's point is a junction of the point over the right side of the abdomen that is one third of the distance from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. When we draw the line between anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus at the junction of the one third from the anterior iliac spine, superior iliac spine, the portion is called as McBurney's point. At that location, the base of the appendix is present. The clinical importance of that McBurney's point is when a person uh, says that the pain is present at the, exactly at the McBurney's point, then we can think it of it is a appendicitis. So that is appendicitis means the infection present at the appendix. Okay. So what is meant by appendicitis? So appendicitis is a infection present at the base of the uh, infection to the um, appendix and mainly the pain is present at the McBurney's point. The treatment for appendicitis is uh, you have we have to remove the appendix. Okay, we have to remove the appendix by opening the abdomen at the McBurney's point. And next one is ascending colon. So it ascends from the cecum and extends to the liver. It ascends from the cecum and extends up to the liver where it turns into the transverse colon. So by a bend, that bend is called as a right colic flexure or otherwise hepatic flexure. And next one is transverse colon. So it is the largest portion of the colon. It is about 45 centimeters long and it crosses the abdomen from the right colic flexure to the left colic flexure. So that after that left colic flexure, it continues as descending colon. Okay. So the large intestine, this large intestine attaches to the posterior abdominal wall by a peritoneum called as transverse mesocolon. So this is a transverse mesocolon which attaches to the transverse colon okay next one is descending colon so it descends from the left colic flexure to the left iliac fossa it is about 25 to 30 centimeters is long so this is a descending colon it descends from left colic flexure to the iliac fossa so it is about 25 to 30 centimeters long it continues with the sigmoid colon okay it continues as sigmoid colon Diameter of the descending colon is lesser than the ascending colon. The diameter of the descending colon is lesser than the ascending colon. So this ascending colon, so this is somewhat larger, whereas the descending colon is somewhat smaller in the diameter. Okay. Now we will discuss about the sigmoid colon. Now sigmoid colon is continuation of the descending colon and it forms a yes shape. So this is a yes shaped loop. Yeah, so that's why it is named as sigmoid colon. It is about 40 centimeters in length and fecus which is present, uh, which is uh, prepared in the total large intestine is stored in the sigmoid colon until it is passed out through the rectum. Okay, now blood supply of the large intestine by superior mesenteric artery. So by the superior mesenteric artery, it supplies to the appendix cecum ascending colon and right two-third of the transverse colon and next one is it is the inferior mesenteric artery which supplies the last one-third of the transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon okay all the structures are supplied by uh, these blood vessels superior mesenteric uh, artery and the inferior mesenteric artery and next one is a rectum rectum is the last portion of the large intestine so this is the rectum so this is a female pelvis if you see here in the female pelvis anterior we are having urinary bladder behind that we are having the uterus and the final portion is uh, rectum so this thing we will clearly you know, studied in the uh, reproductive system okay so it begins at the anterior to the level anterior to the level of third sacral vertebra this uh, rectum is begins at the third sacral vertebra and which it is located this rectum is present in the pelvic uh, pelvis and it ends at the three centimeters anterior to the coccyx in the anus this rectum is ends at the coccyx three centimeters anterior to the coccyx and an u-shaped tuborectal muscle which forms a 
sling at the junction of the rectum and anus is present. So this is a U-shaped one muscle is present. That is buborectalis muscle, which forms a sling-like structure at the junction of the rectum and anus. So at the junction of the rectum and anus, it forms a, a sling-like structure, which makes a anorectal angle. Okay, it forms a anorectal angle. Next, the blood supply of the rectum is by superior rectal artery and middle rectal artery and inferior rectal arteries. Okay. Now, anal canal. So, last portion of the racial practice, anal canal. And it is about 3.8 to 4 centimeters in long and it extends from the anorectal junction. So, it extends from the anorectal junction and to the external anal opening. Anal opening is present in between buttocks and 4 cm anterior to the tip of the cortex. Anterior to the tip of the cortex, 4 cm anterior to the tip of the cortex. This anal opening is present. Now, what is the difference between large intestine and small intestine? So, large intestine is a longish and smaller in width, whereas, uh, sorry, small intestine is a longer and smaller in width, whereas large intestine is shorter and has broader in width. And it, in between the stomach and the large intestine, small intestine is present. And the last portion of the digestive tract is large intestine. It helps in the small intestine is mainly helps in the digestion and absorption, whereas large intestine is mainly helpful in the reabsorption and also elimination of the wave. That is the main difference. And it absorbs the small intestine absorbs the carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, and vitamins, whereas large intestine absorbs the water, nutrients, and salts. Small intestine is having three parts: one is duodenum jejunum and ileum, whereas large intestine is having cecum, colon, rectum and anal canal. That is about the difference between large intestine and small intestine. So in the next class, we will discuss about the accessory organs of the digestion. That's it for today's class. Uh, we will conclude by this. Thank you.